Hello, welcome to another session of Superimpose Tutorials. Today we are going to mimic a double exposure effect using Superimpose X. Uh, these kind of edits have become very popular recently for creating things like an album cover. So let's get started. To create this effect, we will need three different photos. First one is the facial profile of a person, and the next two are two different city skylines. This is the screen that the app starts off with, and below you can see the albums that I have on my iPhone, and above that you can see the photos which are there in the selected album. I am going to choose the photo of the person and since we need only the facial profile of the person I am going to crop the photo before we load it and if we want to have a aspect ratio of the crop we can do it here I am going to choose one by one is to one which is uh, a square and then move and size it and then press the choose button now here we have the first image which is the base layer now one important thing here is we have to be careful while loading the first image because the size of that image is uh, going to determine the size or the resolution of the final product okay so the first thing we are going to do here is remove the background or basically to cut out the person from the photo and we are going to do it in the masking section so let's go ahead and press the mask button below so masking is nothing but removing a background from a photo or making some area transparent so that if you add another layer behind the photo you can see through that transparent area what is there on the layer behind it so basically you can use masking to replace a background of a photo the default masking tool is a brush and using the brush you can remove your background but since in this photo we have a clear foreground we are going to use another tool called magic lasso to use this tool you just have to draw an outline around the object you want to mask out and you don't have to be 100 percent accurate while drawing the outline the app will do that for you and that is why it is called a magic lasso so we are drawing the outline here we need to complete a loop for the tool to work and once it is done we press the tick mark below and voila we have the cutout ready for us and to get a better view of the mask I press the stop button here and then tap the little eye button over here to cycle through different color viewing modes for the mask and here you can see that the mask around the lip area is not done properly so we are going to fix it using the brass masking tool so we go ahead and select the brass now and then use it to fix our mask and since we are viewing the mask in a blue color here the blue area here means the transparent area in the photo and as you can see there are some portions on the leaves which are shown in blue which means it has become transparent it, it got masked but we want we don't want that we want the leaves to be visible now and there is something important here by default a masking tool will remove pixels 
or make them transparent. But we want the transparent pixels to become opaque now. So for that, we need to change the masking mode to restore. And to do that, we just need to press the uh, bottom right, that little plus button over there, and then the masking mode will change. So now we are in the restore mode. And now if we use the brush, as you can see, it is removing the blue area, which means it is removing the transparent area and making them opaque. So while refining a mask, we may have to switch between these two modes frequently. Here uh, we have some more transparent area, which we want to get rid of to make the clothes visible. And the area around here, it is very difficult to do it with a brass because they are very fine and it's, it's almost impossible to do it using a brass. So uh, there is another tool to fix areas around the hair and it is called the hair masking tool and we are going to use that. So I pick up the hair masking tool here and to use the tool I need to paint the area where there is hair but the masking is not proper. So I am going to paint the area here and then press the tick mark button below and here we have the result and we keep doing that again and again for all the area that has imperfect masking for hair and the mask, hair masking tool can be a little slow, so I don't try to do it on the entire hair. Do it in small portions. Now it's all done. See how refined the hair mask has become. Okay, so we are done with masking. Let's go back to the normal viewing mode and then I am going to move to the transform section uh, where I can move and scale or rotate a layer on the image. So I am going to move her to the middle of the screen to leave some space below because I am going to add a, a photo of a city skyline upside down below her. And I am going to add the city skyline as a new layer. And to add the image as a layer, I can go and press the add layer button, which you can see here on the bottom right corner. And then I'm gonna select photo layer, and then select this city skyline photo from the photo library. Okay, and now we have the second layer of our project. And if you press the top right button here, you can see a layer stack over there. So it will display all the layers which are there in the project. As of now, we have two layers. The bottom layer is the photo of the lady, which we have already masked. And the top layer is the city skyline. And what we see on the screen now is the blended image, the combined image. But sometimes it could be very useful to view only the current layer that we are working on instead of the blended image. Uh, for example, when we are masking a particular layer, it can be useful if we view only, the, only that layer that we are working on. And to do that, we just need to press the second button from the top right, just like this. And now if we select a different layer, it will display the current layer which you have selected. Now let's go with the city skyline as the current layer because we are going to remove the sky or mask out the sky from this layer. Let's go to the masking section now. And now we are going to use a different masking tool called the magic wand. 
Magic Wand is a very useful masking tool if you have to erase a portion of the image which is of solid color. For example, we want to remove the sky from this image and the entire sky is almost blue and all the pixels in the sky are connected. To use the Magic Wand, you have to tap on the point where you want to mask it and drag your finger from the point. The more you drag from the point where you touched it, the wider the color range that it masks. So some points here are not connected to the actual sky, so we have to mask them separately. For example, the portion here and here. And the sky here is more blue compared to the bottom portion, so we mask them separately. So the masking has been completed for this layer, and this is how the blended image looks after masking. And we are going to turn the skyline upside down and try to match the edges to the layer below it. And once that is done, we are going to bring up the layer stack viewer and tap on the current layer, the top layer, and then merge it down to the layer below it. The merge operation combines two layers to create one single layer. Okay, now I want to fill the transparent area with a white color. And to do that, I add another layer and choose photo layer but this time instead of photos i go to the color sections of this photo browser which is there on the top here you can create a layer with a color gradient or a solid color and you can choose the aspect ratio of the image and here is how you choose the color but I'm going to use a white color for this project and press the choose button. So the layer has been added now and I go to the transform section and double tap on the layer to fit it to the base layer. And if you open the layer stack viewer, you can see the new layer at the top. And now we are going to the masking section and there is something interesting we are going to do. We are going to transfer the mask of the bottom layer to the top layer. And how do you do that? Make sure that the top layer is selected, the white layer, and then press the clip up button in the masking section. Now as you can see, the mask from the bottom layer has been added to the top layer, which is the white layer. But that is not exactly what we want. We want to punch a hole on the white layer so that the figure in the bottom layer is visible and the area surrounding it remains white. And to do that, we just need to invert the mask of the top layer. And that can be done just by pressing the invert button in this section. Here we go. And now, as you can see, we have punched a hole in the shape of the bottom layer into the top layer and now we can see through that hole that we have punched into that layer now we are going to use that feature we are going to insert another layer in between these two layers okay now we have this third layer added into our project but this is sitting at the top of the layer stack and we want to position this layer below the uh, white layer where we have punched the hole through and we just do it by dragging and dropping it now you can see that this new layer is visible through the hole only the portion where the hole was punched now we move and scale it to give the look that we want and then we move to the filter section 
to increase the contrast and saturation a bit to make it look more interesting okay we are almost there it already looks good but we want to bring a little bit of facial features into the foreground and let's do that I select the bottom layer and create a duplicate of that using this menu and then bring this duplicate layer to the top but I do not want the entire uh, face to be on the top it is just hiding the layer that we just added so we go to the masking section and use the brush tool to remove the portion that we don't want and now we are going to use a soft brush to erase the edges because we don't want these sharp edges and we want to make the face blend with the background so in the brush settings we go and select the feeder brush and increase the smoothness to maximum now you can see that the brush has become very smooth and the edges are not sharp anymore Now I go to the transform section and try out some blending modes and see which one looks better on this particular image. In this kind of projects you can experiment with different blending modes here and see which one you like. So multiply looks good to me so I'll stick to that. And finally our project is ready. So we can go and save it just by pressing these buttons and we are done. Hope you liked this tutorial and I will come back with some more next time.